the, the invitation that God gives to the people that he made is so, so generous and came at such a high price to a him. A high price he gave that, up a um, weekend. That uh, he gave up a weekend. Right. How confident are you in defending what you believe? Find out on this episode of LED Live. Light exposing darkness. Welcome to LED Live, the show where we use the light of Christ to expose the darkness found in the media and our culture today. We want to welcome Josiah to the show. Thank you so much for being here and joining in, joining in the discussion. So let's jump right into this. Have any of you ever been to a Satanist temple? Yes, I have. No. Have you seen one like driving on the street? Oh yeah, there's a Satanist temple. I think I have. <laughs> no? I think no. I have. Okay. Well, have you ever encountered or talked with a Satanist? Yes. No. You're yeah. saying yes. Yeah. Uh, I was at school. Oh. I was walking down the hallway and. The school that I had was at. They, uh, they had a little club. We were ha we, we had a conversation because I brought something up in English class, mm -hmm. and they wanted to ask me a little more about it because I was relating uh, a character from a book that we were reading with Jesus, and he just wanted to tell me that I was incorrect and mm. Jesus is a fraud and all that. And I was so like, who, awesome. Who was the uh, Satanist? Like a, a fellow student? Yeah. Oh, wow. He was about the same age as me. Okay. So that was pretty scary. Interesting. So did they have a Christian club at your school too, or no. just a Satanist just, club? Just the Satanist club. But it wasn't, it wasn't backed up by the school. It was right. more like, we're just going to hang out and do our thing. But since it was a public school, mm. they couldn't really say no. Mm. So. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, when you say a Satanist, it's kind of a broad term because it is. we think... A Satan worshiper, but a Satanist mm -hmm. will tell you we don't worship Satan. We don't even believe in Satan. He's kind mm -hmm. of just like our mascot. We do what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We kind of like, as long as it doesn't hurt someone else, then we can do it. But then there's others that say, well, it doesn't right. even matter if we hurt somebody else. So you probably find a lot of atheists who could identify with a, a Satanist. You know? Right. And we're, we're going to go into that, delve into what exactly a Satanist is. But before you guys get that information, because I don't know if all of you know what exactly a Satanist is, what would you imagine a Satanist would look like? It's like dark. Yeah. Dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like sad looking. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Basically me like 15 years ago. Or <laughs> yeah, I was thinking straight emo, maybe yeah. like a gold Baphomet chain. God. <laughs> Sometimes you can you can find somebody with good looking, yeah. made a lot of money. I mean, I interviewed some guy last year. Some he is now a Christian, but he was an ex Satanist. Mm. And, and the little I see this in Spanish, he he's from Colombia, Venezuela, but now he lives in Colombia. And he, I mean, he shared a lot a lot of things. Mm. And now he was like praying to Satan, that kind of Satanist, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was very involved. Um, uh, heavy metal and doing all this stuff and all the practices and all the stuff that he needed to do to you know worship so he can have more money and mm. yeah a, a lot a lot of stuff oh, wow. mm -hmm. so i mean you asked the question but i think it's fair to flip that what's a christian look like you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like yeah. what are these we're kind of you know stereotyping which is what we all do Absolutely. everybody's guilty <laughs> of it but you know what is a christian supposed to look like i mean can you just walk up to somebody on the street and be, oh yeah you're a christian i can tell by the way you dress you know yeah, only if you wear our shirts well, I mean, but actually you should be able to wouldn't you agree it's yeah. interesting their yeah. actions. it's interesting because most people in society now say i'm a christian but like when you boil it down are you actually so like mm -hmm. i you could go down the street and be like you're a christian and probably be right Probably. But mm. most likely you're not. Mm. You're just, mm. I go every Christmas and Easter, yeah. so I'm now. I believe in the man upstairs. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that I feel like that the stereotype of I'm a Christian is very loosely given and more. Uh, th there was a quote that I really liked that it was uh, Christ's biggest dream is that Christians would act like him. Mm. And that was that was something that I, I read a couple of years ago and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start doing that. Yeah. You know? awesome. That's true. I just think it's ironic. You can cut this if you want to, but I think it's ironic that the two major holidays that people celebrate, Christmas and Easter, 
are the two ham holidays. Ham? Oh, wow, yeah. Ham holidays. What is yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, we're so thankful, Jesus, that you died so yeah. we could eat ham because you never <laughs> would. <laughs> oh. That's totally staying in. <laughs> <laughs> Hey YouTube, can I trust the Bible? Yes, you can, and I'll show you why in five minutes or less. Okay, so let's learn a little bit about the Church of Satan, okay? Mm -hmm. And stop me anytime if you guys want to respond to anything. So as Mikey was saying, you're totally right. The Church of Satan does not believe in the devil, neither a Christian or Islamic notion of Satan. So Peter H. Gilmore, which actually is a high priest of the church, describes its members as skeptical atheists, describing the Hebrew, sorry, embracing the Hebrew root of the word Satan, which is, do you know the Hebrew root oh. or the meaning of Satan? Is it adversary? Adversary, adversary. correct. So the church views Satan as a positive archetype who, I shouldn't be biased while reading this, I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> but the church views Satan as a positive archetype who represents pride, individualism, and enlightenment, and as a symbol of defiance against the Abrahamic faiths, which Anton Levy, you guys know him? LeVay, yeah. LeVay um, criticized for what he saw as a suppression of humanity's natural instincts. Mm. So the high priest, um, Peter Gilmore, has stated that, my feeling is that anybody who believes in supernatural entities on some level is insane. Mm. Whether they believe in the devil or God, they're abdicating reason. So he goes on to say that Satanism is the beginning, has its beginning in atheism, and taking the view that the universe is indifferent. So there is no God and there is no devil. No one cares. You know, I didn't know this until I think it was either early this year or last year that you... even in the, there are some Christians that do not believe that Satan in the Old Testament is the same as Satan in the New Testament. Like they're different beings like Satan right. and Lucifer. And mm. yeah, they're like not the same. Interesting. Where I've always grown up with that understanding, like, okay, these are just the same being, you know, yeah. Old Testament, New Testament, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. Same being all throughout, but there are even Christians that make a distinction between two different beings. Old Testament, New Testament, Satan? Mm -hmm. I've What's never that heard different? that one. Mm -mm. I've heard people think God is different in the Old Testament, New mm -hmm. Testament, never yeah. Satan, though. So, yeah, not nihilists, they're like, the definition here says the rejection of all religious and moral principles in the belief that life is meaningless. So mm. would they reject all moral principles though? No, no. I know a nihilist who, yeah, he's got some standards. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. At least. I mean, how many people do you actually know that would just say, yeah, go for it, rape my wife or daughter or something, you know, like, not to I mean, to be completely amoral, you would have to literally agree with like everything and mm. say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You could not ever speak against anything anybody was doing. Wait, you can't lock up that guy for murdering? Wait, you're going to tell me I can't lock him up? Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I can lock him up for any reason, really. Yeah. You know, uh, chaos. Well, there was an interesting point that I, that I found. See, Levy and the church espouse the view that Satanists are born, not made. That they are outsiders by their nature, living as they see fit. Um, who are self-realized in a religion which appeals to the would-be Satanists' nature, leading them to realize that um, they're Satanists through finding a belief system that is in line with their own perspective and lifestyle. Now, I actually agree with that when you think about it, because all of humanity is born, in a sense, as Satanists. Right. By definition of the word. <laughs> and you see that in Psalms chapter 51, you know, we were born and shaped in, in, in iniquity. And Christ is the one who 
cleans up our hearts and make makes us new creatures. Mm. So I hope you stayed. You know, you didn't click off <laughs> because I'm not celebrating Satanism. <laughs> I'm just saying that in the Maybe. definition of the word, mm. it does make sense. So adherence to the philosophy have described Satanism as a non-spiritual religion of the flesh or the world's first carnal religion. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, like, just kind of bounce off what you were saying in our scripture that says we're born enemies of Christ. Mm -hmm. What's a religion? That's an excellent question. For me, I would say lifestyle. Religion is a lifestyle that reflects mm -hmm. your belief system. The worldview. Yeah, worldview. Um, so I, I found this verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Mm. So I could see how someone with a Satanist mentality rejects spirituality. Mm. He could. <laughs> because, um, yeah, because they didn't accept the spirit of God. Okay, so by definition, here's what a religion is. A okay. belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal god or gods. So mm. by that definition, they don't have a religion. Because right. they don't believe yeah. in supernatural beings. Hmm. Okay. So how can it be classified as a religion? Mm -hmm. uh, because they pay two hundred and twenty-five dollars a month and get registered, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that would be the the only thing. Because if you're saying Satan doesn't exist, God doesn't exist, really, there is no God. How can you have a religion? Yeah. And how can you get the perks of a religious organization? Well, you could have a nonprofit. That's right. Some benefits from the government. Yeah. But I don't think you could be classified as a religious nonprofit right. because you don't believe in God. Very good point. Technical. Wow. So, or any god. <laughs> and, yeah. and ridicule those who even believe in anything supernatural. So, of course, like any <laughs> other, I guess I can't say religion, um, belief, there's a spectrum or sure. group of individuals. There's a spectrum. So our, our thinking of what a Satanist might be or what they may believe might be actually different from the average Satanist. So I was on YouTube and I found this video from Jubilee. You guys familiar with the with yeah. channel Jubilee? They have a series called mm -hmm. Middle Ground, and I wanted us to react to it. Um, so this is, a, this is a media ministry on a budget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, ask you guys some questions or say the statements that they said in the video. You just have to decide whether you agree with it or you disagree. And you'll acknowledge that by either red, you disagree, or blue, you agree. So please, everyone, <laughs> pick one red Everybody's marker. In the hot seat. <laughs> or one Blue. Hey, this feels very political. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll count. You want the red? Mm -hmm. Gray. Well, Green. Perfect peel. season for that. Uh, I'll say three, two, one, and then you put up your decision, and then we'll discuss. You can explain why mm -hmm. you chose your side. Mm -hmm. And You're then we'll hear the positions of the uh, people who participated in the video. Okay? Are you ready? Yeah, Let's do it. Do it. The title answer. of the video is can Satanists and major religions see eye to eye? Okay? Hmm. Can they? <laughs> we'll answer that question at the end. Can they? All right, first statement. So don't answer yet. I'll give you like two seconds to think about it, and then we'll put up our, our <laughs> decisions. Hell is a real place. Hell is a real place. Okay, ready? Which one is... Yeah. The red one is <laughs> Red is disagree. disagree. Blue is agree. Yeah, you agree with the blue and red is disagree. disagree. Yes. Yeah. All right. Hell is a real place. Three, two, one. All right. Wow. We have agree and disagree. So let's it's start. It's a tricky thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, not right now. They're going to be. Okay, not right now, but it's going to. But you That's believe why it's I disagree. A, a real place or no? Well, it Whether is. it's now or later. I yeah, mean, later. We so, kind of we kind of live <laughs> where it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, hey, we're over here with the red pen. I mean, I'm I'm looking. You know, we're, we're on the same page. Yeah. I'm looking at it as an event. Okay, yeah. I would agree with you. I think. And then it happens a, at a, a particular yeah. place and time. In time. Mm -hmm. But not so much like it's a place like a now, right ongoing. Now. Right. Mm -hmm. Not like that. No. Yeah, well, I, I believe so. that hell is a punishment, not a place. 
because you have all these different things. You have the lake of fire that's designated for Satan and false prophets. That's going on over, over there. And then you that's have the true. second death over here. And it's like, it's pretty mm -hmm. much happening all over this planet. Mm. So I see it more as a punishment than a particular place. Like, this is hell. But like you said a all. place. Yeah. Well, because we look at the word hell in the Bible, we get this picture of a pit that's flaming or whatever. But when you look at the concordance, it's four different words. Mm -hmm. And there is a grave. And there are scriptures that say, you know, though I lay down in hell, you're there with me. Mm -hmm. And it's the grave. And then Revelation talks about death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. That's mm -hmm. the act of death will be no more. The act of being laid into a grave will be no more. There'll be no, no use for death or the grave. It's going to be mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, hell being cast into the lake of fire has to... A place, a place, but not really a place. It's in hell. Yeah. <laughs> really, that's, that's a, I wanted to put both up. But. These are those who disagree that hell is a place. I would never worship a god that would send someone to an eternal lake of fire to be burned forever for the simple fact of non-belief. When that deity knows what it would take to convince every single person on this planet that is cruel, it is inhumane, it is not kind, it is not generous, and that is not a god worthy of worship. <laughs> well, that was his answer. She yeah. wasn't. But well, I agree with he, yeah, I agree I what agree. he's saying. If it were true, I would yeah. agree. Did he say disagree? Or? He disagrees that okay. hell is a real place, and his he gave his reasoning. And he agreed why nobody would worship a god that would do such a thing. But what he also said was, he he's skeptical that God exists, and um, what he's saying is, God knows exactly what it takes to get you to believe, and I think God's doing that all the time. But people mm -hmm. are putting the blinders on. Mm -hmm. How many times have you? And have a non-believer talk to a believer and the believer is saying like, well, what about this thing that happened in your life? What about creation, all this stuff? And they're just like, no, no, no. Like they're being shown. God is sending them a witness even. Yeah. Look at what God has done in your life. And they're like, no, no, no. Yeah. I don't believe in that God either. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't either. Mm -hmm. What's more, it would be damning all, I mean, the vast majority of everyone who's ever existed for not believing in him for a set of rules that he created. To be fair, I, f I feel like this presupposes that to burn in hell means that you don't believe in God. I'm sure that there are religions, and I know that there are people who believe that hell is a place for murderers, you know? And when I was Jewish, we didn't believe in hell. They didn't even talk about the devil. I just kind of came upon it myself. I believe that in the event that we have spirits and they will go on to some other realm, it's probably more of a nebulous place than a physical hell, lake, fire, everything. I don't even believe we have souls necessarily. Yeah. Oh. I'd like to see some evidence like, before I, I, I believe something like believe that. I barely believe that we're even conscious, let alone. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm about to have an existential crisis up here. <laughs> the, I think oh, well, he's the Christian that responds. You want to hear his response? Interesting. He's the only Christian in the group. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. The only Christian. Yeah. Christian, Hindu, Muslim. Wow. The historical Christian position is, is that, that the gift of, the, the invitation that God gives to the people that he made is so, so generous and came at such a high price to a him. A high price, he gave that, up a um, weekend. That uh, He gave up a weekend. Right. Um, he was God before. Yeah, yeah. He was God during, and he's God now. He gave up a weekend. If I knew right now that I could go off and die and then not die how where's the gift in that number one i'm able to look at, at the the grace that has been extended to grace. me and, I, and yeah and i receive it yes okay so the way that i would commonly think of it is is that if i gave up the life of of my own son um, in exchange for your life that that it is okay then for me to to make the the invitation that, that God makes towards us. Um, is that moral? Is it moral? Is it moral? On when a corporeal level. Jesus took on the, the penalty that I deserve for the, the sins that I committed, if, if we're looking at, you know, the traditional Christian faith. And so I receive uh, his gift of grace and as, as a payment for, for the things that I had done. So your question, is it moral or is it just, is it fair? I'm able as a Christian to say, no, it's not fair um, because I deserve the, the punishment that he took on himself. Hold it down. Okay, yeah. <laughs> cool. I believe 
in good and evil. All right. We'll Unanimous. Agree. <laughs> awesome. So why? Why do you believe that? Because you can see it since the beginning. There is good and evil. Mm -hmm. It says in Revelation that there was war in heaven. So it, if there is war, it means there is two sides. There is good and mm -hmm. evil. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, it literally started at the beginning. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, when Satan is talking to, well, Satan the serpent is talking to Eve. He actually says the words good and evil. Mm -hmm. And he's like lying to her like God wants to withhold good and mm -hmm. evil from you. If you eat the fruit, you will be like God. Um, knowing good and evil. So, I mean, good and evil is throughout the entire Bible. But he was doing something deceitful. I mean, mm -hmm. he, that's, that's evil. I mean, yeah. how are you going to, you know, I mean, what is the good thing about it? You know, you deceiving. I mean, he was deceiving a, a Eve, a, a person. But if you have so nowadays, no, I mean, you're deceiving. If you have no moral compass, then what's deception? It's just something that you have to do to get what you want. Mm. I mean, that's kill and or be killed. Perfectly okay for somebody to do back to you as well. That's right. Right. That's, that's, I was going to say, it's kind of along the same lines of like that moral compass. If you, sh if you take the Bible away, like you don't even look at it, you're raised with, okay, this is right. This is not right. And so either way, you know, people have that sense of. What is right, what's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's and written on our heart. Right and wrong has always, regardless of what you're raised as you have an idea of what's right and wrong yeah mm -hmm. so even if you're in a different culture it's all the same mm -hmm. so cool well let's hear the argument yeah i think the phrasing is something that's what it's it's a little bit catchy it's just yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just so, I, mean, yeah. I believe in right and wrong and i think some things for me a lot of things lie in the gray area but there are some things that i consider right and wrong but i wouldn't say it's the same as good and evil did she say some things were right and wrong Right, so she says there's right, there's wrong, but the majority of things are in the gray area. Oh. Some, thing, some things so are like both. So I've heard mm. somebody say what's good, sometimes something good is not right. And sometimes that's something that is right is not good. For example, sinning is good, but it's not right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> something like that, yeah. Like it feels good. But yeah, but it's not right. So, so I can attest to this personally. I've had a lot of different opportunities open up for me and they're all really, really good opportunities. But the way I look at it is, yes, they're good opportunities, but are they the right opportunity? Mm -hmm. Like, so the way I'm doing it is if God wants me to go a certain way, that's the right way I should be going. Not just because it's flashy and it's okay mm -hmm. and it's morally all right. That's not the right way. It's why waste my time with all these good things when I should be doing the right thing? So I guess my thing is, if it's not right, how can it still be good for you? Uh, that's well, what I was thinking. I was <laughs> like, okay, what about pizza? You know, I mean, mm. eating pizza, you know, 24 hours or every day for seven days, you know? Yeah. I mean, if it's, it's good, I mean, it tastes good, but it's not right for me. Why? Because, you know, I mean, again, weight or your disease or, mm -hmm. you know, all pills and everything. So what is the good and right there? Yeah, I think I think we're talking about slightly two different things because when Moral she's brain. talking about right and wrong, that's in the context of morals. Yeah. Good and evil are also describing in the realm of morals. We're not talking about the physical properties of an object or personal desires. Mm -hmm. So it really depend, it depends on how it's defined, the way she's talking about it. Um, I, I'm having a hard time wrapping my right, mind around that it could, that there are things that are Great. right that could be Great. evil mm -hmm. or well, that are good and could be wrong. Maybe like to be a stripper is a good job opportunity, you make money but is it morally right? Well, it's not illegal. But then, but then I would have to question whether or not it's good. See, because we're talking about in the moral sense, is it good in the moral sense for her to be a stripper? No. Well, does she make money off of it? Yes, making money, there's nothing wrong with making money, but is it good for her to do that job in the moral sense? I would say no, because it's demeaning to her and it's probably costing her more in the end than she's making. 
I think that would depend on your moral compass, though. There's a lot of people that are like, I love it. Just take my clothes sure. off. Sure. And then that, but it goes back to definitions. What are we saying? What are we saying is right and wrong? Right. How is that being defined? And then how is good and evil being defined? And are we talking about morals or are we talking about desires? Or are we talking about physical properties? These are all different things. Yeah. I think if you look at it from a perspective of, and I'll use this example. It's pretty extreme, but like killing, right? We can all say that you should not do it. Like, just across the board, don't do it. Morally, it's wrong. However, there are times where you do it because you have to, right? Mm -hmm. Also, God did tell people to go literally murder people in cold blood. So I feel like that example of evil things can be good. That would be my way to argue that point That's pretty good example that would definitely be a gray area for sure yeah. exactly so where she's like there's a lot of things that are in the gray area i would definitely put that definitely. and i would argue you know it's evil to do that it's bad to do that so but god's action is bad no to kill people well you're saying killing people is bad and yeah. god directed the killing so god's action is bad so god did something bad i'm saying that in that in that no <laughs> I in mean, that circumstance, an evil thing can be good. But well, the Bible also says well. in Isaiah 520, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Hmm. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So, yeah. you know, we, that's that's a tricky spot to get we'll, in. Because we'll, we'll agree it's in the gray area, so we don't. <laughs> I don't know that it is in the gray area. <laughs> because you're, you, again, it goes back to definitions. You're saying that... Elijah went and murdered those guys. I think there's a difference between murder, which is a, a premeditated intent to do something in cold blood, and what you're talking about is essentially a divine judgment from God. Hmm. He told him, go and do this. They are carrying, they are the instrument to carry out God's judgment. Now, the tricky part that we have in our day and age is we live in a, a slightly different time. We don't live in a theocracy anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there is no one going around as the instrument of divine judgment, judgment right. right? God has reserved that now till the end of time where he will come with his reward and he will mm -hmm. pass judgment. Mm -hmm. So I would say there's a difference between an individual being asked to carry out divine judgment and murder. Right. And that's, again, it goes back to definitions. What are we talking about? Otherwise, you're going to get in that tricky spot of, well, Great. then God, what he did was bad, but we're calling it good. So is God good or is God mm -hmm. bad or is his actions evil? Right. You get in a tricky spot. This is, sure. this is good. Great conversation. Mm -hmm. I believe Satan is evil. Three, two, one. Alex is not sure. <laughs> no, I was just thinking which one it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, why? Why do you believe Satan is evil? Because oh. he, he I mean, the first thing, he was deceitful. Deceitful, okay. And then he was, uh, what do you call that? He is uh, trying to cause war in heaven. He caused chaos. He makes people do evil stuff. Yeah, he's evil. <laughs> he was a, a liar from the beginning. Yeah. He's a murderer. He's seeking who he can devour. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, "By your fruits, you'll know. By, by yeah. their fruits, you shall know them." So, kind of put that on, put that on himself. Mm -hmm. I'm a very simple thinker when it comes to this. Like, you must be like really, really bad to have your creator kick kick you out. <laughs> like. That it's pretty bad. Yeah. But I think yeah. the, the real bad is that he was a creator being and he wants to fight back mm. to his creator. Yeah. You know, as a creature and a creator. Mm. Is that, hey, I want to, you know, in other words, like, hey, I want to <laughs> destroy you. You know what I'm saying? I want to be above. That's what the Bible is saying, Isaiah. Mm. That, I want to put my throne above the stars. So this, you know, I keep hammering this thing of definitions. 
evil means profoundly immoral and wicked. So yep. evil only has meaning if you believe that there is morality. Okay. Mm. Right. If you're an amoral person, and like these people that were talking about in the beginning of the show that are Satanists, they don't believe in a supernatural God mm -hmm. or a supernatural being on either side, then there is no evil. No. Because there are no morals. Mm. So there is no right and wrong. It's all relativism. I can do whatever I want. So do what thou wilt. because we believe that there are morals, then yes, we believe in evil. That means there can be profound immoral and even wicked uh, things. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the Bible references the devil as the evil one mm -hmm. like throughout the Bible. And actually, Jesus went in on Satan in John chapter mm -hmm. 8. Is it John? Yeah, John chapter 8, verse... 44. So he says, and he's talking to the scribes and Pharisees at this point. He's like, ye are of your father, the devil, mm -hmm. and the lusts of your father ye will do. Then he says, he, referencing the devil, was a murderer, as Michelle was saying, from the beginning, mm -hmm. and abode not in the truth, because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, mm -hmm. that's not clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So is the question, I guess, would be, is a liar and a murderer a bad person? <laughs> and if the Satanist can't say yes to that, then we got issues. Mm. Okay, you guys have to go. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Awesome yeah. channel. Do yeah. live studios. English and Spanish. See ya. Yeah, see Bye. 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 Let's listen to what they have to say. <laughs> this will be interesting. <laughs> so let's go back to Genesis, okay? God wanted to keep humans from eating the fruit of knowledge, correct? And Satan, or the serpent, wanted to give humans that knowledge. I believe that's a good action. That is a good action. That's a good yeah, action. That's justifiable. Yeah, I knew this is where this was going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that's always the argument. Mm. Th that's ignorance. Mm. Yeah. Why? Because she, she, she does not even know what Genesis 3 says. What does it say? <laughs> the tree is the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. It's not yep. just the fruit of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at it like it's just a fruit of knowledge, then we've just taken a sharp turn to Gnosticism, right? Oh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. And yeah. because Gnostics, Gnostics say the same thing. Yeah. They say that, okay, well, all the serpent wanted to do <clears throat> was to uh, in, yeah to give knowledge and knowledge is a good thing so mm -hmm. that's why they flip the story and you see this in the hollywood tv movies and music videos and all kinds of stuff all the time they flip that on its head and that's why you see uh you know this character that looks a lot like christ having the attributes of satan and that's why you see this satan like character having the attributes of Christ. They just flip the model on its head. So she's ignorant of the story, which doesn't surprise me because she's a Satanist. Why would she be, you know, extremely educated? I mean, I'm not educated on the book of Satan. So if I tried to speak intelligently on that, I'm sure I would get it wrong. I mean, it just makes sense. I would ask her if knowledge of good and evil is a good thing, then let me have your child for a few days and just show me everything I can, all the knowledge of good things and evil things. And do, do you want your kid to see all that? You want your kids to see, hey, this That's is, yeah. The first uh, person to advocate for equal rights. Yes. We only heard God's perspective, and from my perspective, I mean, just looking into the Bible, it's like we didn't hear Satan's perspective. Maybe he said, this is, God is a tyrannical God, and I'm going to rebel from him, Probably. and I'm going to become a fallen angel to help <laughs> mankind. God. My interpretation and understanding of that story is, is that God created an environment where he, and it was an environment of love and peace, and, and where his children that he created and who he loved, who he created in his image would... They were naked uh, and they didn't have understanding. Yeah, yeah, and that they would... That Did you hear what he said? Yeah. They didn't have understanding. Yeah. I was like, wow. What a punk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to be disrespectful of that guy, but he is intentionally goading this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And so he's really, you know, the guy is... He's outnumbered, for one. Everybody else there doesn't, you know, they're not a Christian. Yeah. And so they're all kind of like ganged up on this one guy and just taking yeah, shots at much. him. 
And so, yeah, he's going to seem a bit flustered and I probably would too, you know, it's like, you're the one in the hot seat. You're the one that has to provide all the answers and everybody there doesn't agree with you and wants to attack you and shoot, shut you down. And if you don't have all the answers, they walk away feeling yeah. like they won, but they're not going to have all the answers either. And it's okay. And you could just tell, you know, he's kind of sitting back like smugly, like just, you know, yeah. taking his jabs. And, and so that's a punk thing to do. One thing I notice is they're ne they never defend their own stance. They're always attacking Christianity exactly. and Christianity's yeah. beliefs. So if I were to watch that and, and walk away, I'm like, well, I didn't really learn much about Satanism. I just yeah. see hateful, hurt people yeah. trying to attack this one guy. Yeah, because like I said, I would have a lot of questions for them. You don't believe in morality? You, you are okay with knowledge yeah. of good and evil? This is not people? a dialogue. It's, it's a rant session. <laughs> and it was an environment of love and peace and, and where his children that he created and who he loved, who he created in his image would... They were naked uh, and they didn't have understanding. Yeah, yeah, and that they would... This is an environment for them to... So, to, well, wait, 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 I gotta, we gotta hear his whole point. Uh, to flourish. And so he puts them in this environment and he desires for them to, 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 to flourish and to be... and to live in, in, in unashamed relationship with him and his perfection and his glory Naked, and, 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 uh, see, and, and and stupid. I see God making simple play things because he's bored if it's real then and then saying don't do this because I don't want you on my level and if you do I have to make sure you can't live forever so you really don't get on my level. Would you think that if you heard that you're one of your friends was having a baby and, and you'd say, oh, you're just making a play thing for your... That's Depending different. Their, That's uh, different. Uh, that, but that, but that, there are some yeah. parents who there use their absolutely. kids as yeah. their play thing. Oh. And to say that, you know, humanity was just God's playthings. He just threw them out there. No, Genesis 2 is quite clear. Man was given a job. How can you do a job if you're stupid or you don't know what to do? The, the other interesting thing is, if you think about it, it's like, why does Adam mention that he's naked later? Yeah. Yeah, it's a realization sin. that he comes to after sin. Yeah. Yep. I'm naked. Like, I don't think he was walking around before he's naked and all of a sudden because of sin, it's like, whoa, like, I didn't know this. I'm naked. Like, what yeah. in the world? Yeah. In other words, the implication is there was something covering them. Now, the Bible doesn't explicitly say there was something covering them. But if you read between the lines and think about it, there was something covering them. Otherwise, yeah. he wouldn't be all of a sudden like, oh, I'm, I'm, there's nothing covering me. Yeah, and if Revelation is really just bringing us back to the perfect plan, which was Eden, Revelation doesn't say that we're going to be naked. It says mm -hmm. we're going to be all wearing white robes and stuff. So, yeah, I, I believe that they were wearing something. Interesting observation, just yeah. in the Bible in general. Satan is always trying to uh, uncover stuff, take clothes off, you know, wow. in yeah. society. Jesus is the one that's always covering things, yeah. covering your sins, covered right. them after they realized they were naked, right? That's true. That's the first thing he did. That's yeah. the first thing Clothes he did. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like... Uh, yeah. Let's not give God any credit for that, yeah. though, right? Wow. Well, yeah, that's it's like they only read such an interesting point. Story. So this, this Satan who is giving them this knowledge and enlightenment left them naked to go wonder, and it's God who came in and clothed them after the fact. Let me cover fact. you. Wow. Let me take care of this. Yeah, yeah it wasn't like, now that you've eaten the fruit, let's go do something, you know. Mm. He just off the scene. He was just one. <laughs> disappeared. Know? Wow. Okay, ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay, so the statement says, religion has caused more harm than good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> this. Kindy. <laughs> Wrong. I was agreeing. But I was <laughs> um, I'm going to say misunderstood religion or I, I would add that people who don't understand who fully understand their religion that is what has led to more harm than good that's my stance there are a lot of different religions what i was thinking so that's what i was thinking too uh, there's a lot of religions okay i mean you got yeah, people you got me that there. are like yeah. you know we're doing child sacrifice that does a lot of harm yeah now if you said christianity has caused more then you could still I'd, i don't know I'd if you say so. more but this caused a lot of harm just because people yeah. abuse, like twist it and use it for their own gain. Because on a global scale, it's Christianity that's kind of had its hand all over the globe, whereas mm -hmm. child sacrifice is more in certain parts of the yeah. world. So yeah, when you think more time. harm than good, that's, that's where my mind went. Christianity is 
truth and Satan is, Satan's not going to win followers by just giving you an a anti that or a lie. He's going to use the truth and twist it and make it have all these errors. Mm -hmm. And that's how he's going to gain the most people is through false interpretations of the truth. Absolutely. So um, with the argument, you know, religion, I'm going to pinpoint and say Christianity and people think of like the Crusades and yeah. things that just abuses that have happened in the name of God and they're like well look at that that's way more harm than good and I would argue uh, James 1 27 they weren't following true yeah. religion true Christianity which is simply put like this James 1 27 pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself or herself unspotted from the world. What I see mm -hmm. here is charity, empathy, and devotion to Christ. And once yeah. you follow those three, I don't think there's any way you can go wrong and cause more harm than good. It seems I, like we have a shirt about that. Yeah, we, <laughs> you can get that shirt on teespring.com. <laughs> nice plug. So I say I agree that religion causes more harm than good. I guess it's because the modern religion, mm -hmm. that like a wrong okay. description. Of religion that people have now because it seems like religion that people have now is everybody think they are truth they are the best and not all of them but a lot of them they tend to belittle other religion yeah mm. so it's cause more harm and if this is the true definition of religion that's a very small piece of the world right now so mm. yeah it's probably doing more harm than good because there's so, so little of this. Well, let's hear what these guys have to say. Religion has caused more harm than good. All the Satanists. Religion has caused a lot of harm. Is, is it the ultimate source of evil? No. Uh, ultimately, people make their own decisions. But we talk about crusades and witch trials and the God hates and the and, and and the snake handlers and the and and the the hypocrites persecution the, of science the, 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 the subjection of science the arts i mean i don't know that there's been a major war that hasn't been at least fueled by religion if not directly started by it some of them were just political things sure. but they were always had a religious backing at some point that f like flared the fire up and sure. made it so much worse than it would have been and they vote <sighs> Yeah, so I was, I was talking to a friend and, you know, they were just like really over the church and just like done uh, and were actually going on to be done with God too because of the people, what the people were doing in the church. And I had to really ask them to separate the two, separate God from religion. Mm. Because, you know, if I, I'm going to use Michelle as an example, go up to Michelle and say in the name of Jesus and then punch her across the face mm. because I claim to be a Christian. I am not actually adhering to God and his principles and what's in the Bible. Yeah. And I was just admonishing her, like, please, like, um, the church, as it's always said, is a hospital for sinners. You know, mm -hmm. you're not going to find anyone perfect within the church, within the religion. There's a lot of just misunderstanding and misinterpretation within the church. And then there's God. How about having a personal relationship with God, understanding mm -hmm. who he is, not someone who's claiming to know him, but him himself. Go and talk to him, read about him. And, and find truth in him instead of religion. That's a that's an interesting point. I I have a friend, um, and they were brought up kind of in the uh, I know there's something, but I don't know what it is kind of mindset. And her mom was raised as a Catholic, and she. I was talking to her for a while uh, one day, and she was just like, you know, I, I just kind of gave up, you know, because there's so many rules, there's so many things, religion and church are, there's just so many things that you have to do to get this. And I was really just like sad for her, because if you think about it, the rules that God gave us, are moral rules that we kind of follow already mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for you to go beyond that and to say well now you have to pay and now you have to go kiss some statues toes and now yeah. you have to go do this it's just who wants to do that right so 
I think I agreed that it does cause more harm because you do have these people that are brought up in the church and they think, okay, well, I'm Catholic or I'm Baptist or I'm this, I'm that, and this is what it is. And then you get older and you start understanding what's going on. You're like, well, they're just taking my money. Mm -hmm. I don't need this. And then you just disown God completely. Right, exactly. So regardless of what religion you go to, there's always going to be that extreme of people that just say, I'm done completely. Yeah, that was, that's where I get my, my thinking that religion is more of a lifestyle. Because growing up in, in a religious household, you follow a certain lifestyle. And then you grow up and you're like, oh, I don't agree with this. So then you detach yourself from not only lifestyle, but the God that was attached to that. So I think it, we kind of have it backwards. But I guess as for children, you have to teach them and for them to be in the lifestyle. But someone coming into the faith at an age where they can reason, I think the first step is understanding who God is and then finding a lifestyle that matches with what you've read in the Bible. You find that religion that matches with what you've read in the Bible. That's interesting, too, because something when people ask me all the time and I'll use the same person, they were like, OK, so what do you what do you suggest to And I was like, well, this, that's an easy question. Read the book of John. That's it. Mm -hmm. First thing you do, mm -hmm. don't read Genesis because you won't understand it. If you don't understand John, you won't understand Revelation. If you don't understand Genesis. So just start in the middle, go to the beginning, get to the end. That's mm -hmm. And you'll just get the whole idea. I don't know if they actually did that, but that, that's, that's kind of my advice. advice. Because to understand the religion you're in, you have to understand how that religion got there. You know. Welcome, Scotty. Yeah. We started off talking about Satanism. Nice. <laughs> in the Church of Satan. And now we're looking at um, a, a video from Jubilee. You familiar with Jubilee, the YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. I didn't know who they were until I saw the video, but it's like a debate thing. I've seen this channel before. Okay. Yeah. Yep, no, never so the that. title, Can Satanists and Major Religions See Eye to Eye? No. So we're just going through the video. Yeah. Everything that they talked about in their response was the actions of the adherents, hmm. which didn't get to the heart of what the religion taught. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that's a that's an interesting thing and I think for them it's a slippery slope because the Bible says by their fruits you will know them. Yeah. And yes, there are people who claim to be Christian and their fruits are lacking. But they're also because they're on the attack in this whole video, they're not talking about changed lives. Mm. or the good that's been done, right? So show me somebody who's converted to Satanism that has changed the world for a better place or stopped beating their children because of it. You know, they were an alcoholic before and then beat their children. And you know what I mean? In other words, show me the fruit for the transformation of a life yeah. out of that. And what they're not addressing are the hundreds of thousands of millions of people who have come to Christ and been transformed. Mm -hmm. Your extreme examples are always going to be the ones in the headlines. Yeah. But your, your transformations don't always make the headlines. Mm -hmm. You know, they happen day by day, uh, little by little, and um, you hear about them. I mean, Satanism is self-centeredness right mm -hmm. if you talk or if you actually watch any um, interviews from any satanists they'll tell you straight out we don't even believe in satan mm -hmm. it's really about worshiping ourselves mm -hmm. so i think it's very opposite of the idea of christianity where it's about other people going and giving your resources to the homeless and you know i, I don't know if you guys brought this up before but when there's a natural disaster that happens i don't really see very many satanists yeah. running in there helping people right yeah. yeah who's always going in there first the christian, christian yeah. Yeah. and so you know i think just just diabolically i don't see how they could see eyeball to eyeball if one person's selfish mm -hmm. and the other one's <laughs> selfless it's yeah. it's interesting because they were the earlier uh it was brought up that uh whatever happens, you have to be okay with it. Mm. Like, there was that idea that, well, nothing really matters, who cares, you know? A couple years ago, I don't know if 
it happened, but they were talking about taking down the Ten Commandments. It was like that huge statue the thing, and they wanted to replace it with their statue. Bobble Man. Mm. Yeah. If you really don't care, just put it next to it. Mm. Yeah. Or like on the other side of town. Don't put it right where that is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Especially, and that also means that you have to go to each courthouse, each historical monument that has the Ten Commandments engraved in it, buff it out, and then... So if you really, like, don't care, why is it a big deal to take down something that's a pillar in our found, foundation? Yeah. But it also, as a country too. But, but I would also ask the question: um, You know, if they have such a problem with the Ten Commandments, are you okay with killing? Are you okay with stealing? Are you okay with cheating on your spouse? Are you okay with these things, right? And you, I'm sure if you ask that question to a Satanist, they'd be like, "Well, you know, I, I don't know if that's okay, right?" I so don't need your book. Yeah, to know they're going to adhere wrong. to right. those same things that are supposedly supposed to be making life better. I'm sure they'll disagree with the with the God thing. Maybe they want other gods. I can understand that, but. Yeah, the first four commandments. Just... Where do morals come from? I wonder if you tell them, hey, our laws came, like, when they first, like, the Constitution was kind of based off of religious. It, it, it was. Yeah, it was actually right? based off If you tell them, now, I wonder what they would say. Now it's case law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's like they've, they've gone from looking at a moral standard and saying, okay, we're going to judge everything against this to now, oh, well, this other guy got off for this. So there you for you can get off for this, or yeah. this other guy got pinned for this, so now you're gonna get pinned for this, mm. and that's just like yeah. It used to be like all humans have unalienable rights or something. We're all created in the image of God and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to bounce off what you're saying, like I, I've brought it up before, you know, and and these people should understand that if Christianity disappeared overnight, how many hospitals would be gone? How many soup kitchens would be gone? Homeless shelters, women be battered women, all these great things. And who's going over there to help the third world countries? You know, missionaries are flying over there with uh, food and, and literature and stuff. And how many atheists do you see like, yeah, I'm going over there for a month and help mm -hmm. build a, a well and a school and all these things. And to be honest, like if you, I, like, if you look at this from a like step back, you see this war that's going on. If you could see through the portals of everything and see this, this you know, enemy that's engaged in fighting against humanity or whatever, right? They're spending their legion of attack on Christianity. Yeah. Like, like people that look at Christianity and go, oh, it's so messed up and there's things. Well, yeah, because they got, the, they got the, the most energy aimed at them to try to manipulate them and change them. And so, yeah, the church has problems. Why? Because you've got, you've got a lot of people, the evil angels fighting against us. So, you know, I think you're right. If you took away all those elements, churches, you know, hospitals, things that Christianity is trying to hold back those, those winds of strife. I mean, this place would just wow, yeah. self-destruct. Okay, ready for the last one? So Scotty, red pen is disagree, blue pen is agree. It's a statement. I respect all religions. Ready? Three, two, one. Wow. So tricky. Okay. <laughs> Four, agree to disagree. Why do you disagree, Keith? Well, I guess on a, on a technicality, I'm not aware of all religions. So I can't say I respect them all. Um, two, I don't know that I would say that I respect atheism as a religion because it doesn't fit the definition of a religion. Um, but I would clarify and say I respect all those people. Um, the religion is another issue because it's the root of what it is teaching the adherents. So I don't know that I respect all of those because I don't agree with all of their, all the principles of every religion, but I respect all the people that adhere to those different religions. Why do you guys agree that you respect all religions? I think it's that, you know, for me, it doesn't mean I, res I agree with all their beliefs and 
like child sacrifice thing but i respect the people because uh maybe that's the best thing that they know they grow up with so i respect them but i don't respect their their religion itself okay yeah. so red pen I guess that's a, really yeah, that's a tricky <laughs> question. If, if you were to rewind, you'd see me being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. but uh, yeah, same kind of thing. I, I respect freedom of choice. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. God is pro choice, even, you know, I don't want to go down that road, but he respect he's, <laughs> he's pro choice in the fact that he allows you to make the choice, but there will be consequences for your choices. And I am all for freedom in that sense. Now, I would like to talk with those people and, and, and yeah. try to show them why I don't agree with what they believe or whatever, but they have every right to believe it. Let's Do you see. want to clarify your, you think God is pro-choice? No, no, no. Let's see if he gets as attacked okay. as I got attacked. Well, just yeah. leave it <laughs> I'll just say I mean. God is okay. giving you the choice yeah. to do that. But just to make sure nothing gets construed <laughs> yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. So for those wondering what we're talking about, check out our video called Hollywood in Politics. I, I, I kind of view it as the way that, that God has allowed creation to, to make these very terrible decisions. And he is not immediately, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna just punish this one and do away with this one. There will be a final punishment of your actions. If you're killing your children, you're gonna have to answer to God for that. Yeah. Um, but I think in the same way, I think that what this country was based on, the idea of being able to worship upon the dictates of what you feel like is between you and God or your God or whatever, I think that in order for that freedom to happen, you have to allow that person, they're gonna, some are going to worship Satan. Mm -hmm. Some are going to worship this thing over here. And so it's like to have that freedom over here, you, you have to be like what, the way God treats it. Some people are going to totally abuse that and and go over there. But you're, you're I think, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this maybe in a turn. But you're you're saying you're saying freedom and respect are the same thing. I'm saying I can disrespect what your religious belief, your religious construct is, and that has nothing to do with your personal freedom. No. That's tricky. Disrespect meaning like like what? I'm not, saying, like a, I'm not saying your religion shouldn't be allowed. Oh, okay. I'm saying I disagree with the uh, your your root teachings that that religion is teaching. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm there to like shut it down yeah. and like yeah. squash it out. I'm just saying I don't have the same respect for that as I do other things like Christianity. But you would be you would be of the courteous opinion that you you would I mean I, I, I'm against killing children. So if you're killing children, yeah, that there should be some lines here. But I mean to the most part, however you worship, even if it's like in a solely selfish environment like Satanism, I think that it, you, you should be allowed to be able to do that. Like, it's, it's a platitude of all religions to say, I respect your religion, I respect your religion, I respect your religion, but you're all saying, oh, I respect your right to have that religion, but then internally you're saying, Allah is the only God, Jesus is not God. Vishnu, Krishna, these are gods, these are deities. Jesus Christ is the only way, he is the answer, he is the only one. I'm right, you're all wrong, but I'm going to be nice about it. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone's we gonna feel like their way is the right way. Yeah, we were kind of talking about respect. You know, I'm thinking like if I went into uh, a Buddhist house and they got this temple and they're like, "Oh, be respectful. I'm not gonna go over there and be like, what? This don't mean anything, you know, or whatever." He doesn't agree that they're all right. He only agrees that he only thinks he's right. So what's mm. the difference? I don't uh, think you would. You, you know, I don't think anybody that's worshiping in a religion is like, "I'm worshiping the wrong one." I love yeah, it. Right. <laughs> you know, right. it's like Undeceived. that's what he's saying. He's saying he doesn't respect all religions. So he's saying by them saying that they do, it's actually not true because they're, they're thinking yeah. that they're right and all the rest are wrong. Hmm. So that's his point I guess you'd have to really define, define respect. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because because I, respect to me in my mind is like I'm I'm allowing you the space to to live out your life as you you see fit. Um, that doesn't mean co it, yeah. Like a disrespect to that would be like no, I'm going to pretty much not let you do that. Yeah. So here's our definition. 
I don't know. I've done this like three times of, already of on respect? the show. Of respect? Respect. Okay. A feeling of deep admiration no. for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. There's a second definition. Due regard for the feelings, wishes, rights, or traditions of others. Yeah, it would be hard to say you have that for every religion. Maybe some others, but... Would occur a more appropriate word, appropriate word be tolerance? That's okay, so yeah, there's a lot of things you'll tolerate, yeah. even if you don't have respect for it. So let me ask you this: Did Jesus respect the Pharisees? He called them hypocrites and everything. Else. <laughs> you brood of vipers! Yeah, yeah. whitewashed tombs. I think he corpses. did. If if you go by this definition, a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. You know, you really start to wonder: Does Jesus have respect for, for any of us? Yeah. But then you, you, I could say that um, the fact that he was doing those things, calling them out on stuff, wanting them to change, is a form of respect yeah, because he yeah. cares for them. I it's think like a parent would rebuke you. Caring for them is not the same as having admiration for what they've done. Yeah. I think it was more of like a okay, you're you're a priest you're held to a higher standard and what you're doing is not meeting that bar. So I'm going to be extremely brutally honest of how God feels, mm -hmm. but I do respect you or I admire you because you are a priest, which means you do have that higher standard and society sees you that way so i will treat you that way but i'm going to be brutally honest with how i actually think about you well i mean jesus saying you know if you were blind you would not be held accountable for the sin but you say that you've seen so therefore i'm holding you accountable for right. your sin um yeah they were held to a different standard and he was calling them out because they they were the gatekeepers they were the ones that were supposed to be the educators yeah. Right. And they were the they were the ones that were actually keeping the people in the dark. So he called them out about it. Personally, I'm going to call this as I don't think Jesus has a lot of respect for by this definition. What I think Jesus has is a lot of love. And, you know, we we probably think of this in terms of respect, like how we see it. What is respectful back then their time? Words of definitions even change. There's probably close to 500 words in the King James Bible that don't mean the same thing to us now as they did when they were written. Mm -hmm. um, but so, so it's it's you have to be careful about how you define those. I mean, the same group of people Jesus called them vipers and brood of hypocrites. You know, and it's like by by our definition, if you've seen somebody that was like an educated high member of society. To call them a snake and a hypocrite would not be a very respectful thing to do by our own, uh, the way that we deal with now. But he loved them mm -hmm. and he cared about them. And that's why he did what he did. But I don't know that he, quote unquote, respected them. I really hope we get a replay because there are some comments that Jesus threw out like, are you that dull? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like, I really want to know if that was lost that in translation like? or how did that really come out? You know, is he really just calling him, you idiot? <laughs> you know, it's like... I wonder if he said it as, like, calmly and, like, you're an idiot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think that there's a difference between believing that somebody else's religion is wrong and respecting it. Mm -hmm. I feel like you can have respect and still disagree. Yeah. And that's where I'm kind of coming from. And I disagree with all of you guys on your religious beliefs. But of course, everybody disagrees on their religious beliefs. Like, I think we all disagree with yeah. each other to a certain extent. But we can all live in harmony and we can't I respect the other person's views. On yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that is an excellent point. Mm -hmm. I respect someone's you know, someone's really into that. Like I've had these conversations with Buddhists and I've actually recently had a conversation with a, with a Buddhist and he just went on and on and on about his Buddhism and this and that and he was kind of blending these ideas with Christianity and I just kind of sat and I listened, you know, and I didn't just like rebuke him or be like, nah, dude, that's what, whatever, that's not true. And I kind of just listened to him and then did not like slam him for like what he believed and then I kind of, and, and I kind of just said, well, I actually kind of see it a little bit like this. And I just shared my 
understanding of the way things were out there with him. But I think I've, I, I came at that with a, with a reproach of like, I, I, I respect where you're coming from. And the fact that you're really seeking out something greater, I would hope that you're, you know, open to truth if God shows it to you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but in my head, I was like, man, this guy's way off base. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so back to the original question, can Satanists and other religions, specifically Christianity, see eye to eye? No. No. <laughs> I don't think they're compatible. I don't either. They're complete opposites. They are complete and it's opposites. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I, I, that's but how it should be, really. could I have a decent conversation with a Satanist? Sure. Absolutely. And, and would I want to share, um, you know, my worldview or my truth with him? Then, yeah, I would, I would certainly try. But, um, you know, if he... I think you have to kind of allow that same sort of space if he's just like trying to share his religion. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to expect him to listen to you, yeah. you would have to at exactly. some point listen to what he has to say. Don't be combative about it. Yeah. Actually, it's really in the silence because a lot of times we're trying to show so much quote unquote truth and we're just adding fuel to the fire for them to just knock things down. And then we're in the position of, man, well, I didn't think about that. Wait, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's like we're mm -hmm. digging a hole whether and what's better it would be if we would just stop and listen just as jesus did he stopped and listened and he asked questions mm -hmm. you know following his example well i had this other question written down but keith kind of uh, i think we may have to reword it because it's can satanists and christians respect each other and i was like oh absolutely but i don't think <laughs> that's accurate anymore mm -hmm. what's a, what's a different question i guess live in harmony well, I admire harmony. your dedication to Satan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little oh, hard. Really dedicated. <laughs> well, my argument is that Jesus offers the same gift of salvation to them as he does us. So I guess, in a way, we should have love for them. Yeah. We should care about them and their well-being and always be willing and ready to offer or to answer their question or to have a conversation with them. It shouldn't be... Oh, you're a Satanist. I'm going to walk away now because, yeah, I'm not exactly, trying to yeah. involve yeah. myself in that. Yeah. You can smile and in your head you'll be like, someday you'll know the whole truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want you guys really to remember James chapter 1, verse 27. In dealing with anyone, uh, there's no instruction that says do this and that excluding Satanists or any group of people outside of Christianity. No, we're supposed to visit the widows and, and orphans across the board. I'm glad I jumped in at the end here. Yeah. <laughs> no idea what you said in the beginning. But this is great. <laughs> so I'd like to leave you guys and those watching with two main points as we wrap up here. One, as Christians, um, we have a bigger responsibility than just living on this planet. And that's clear in Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission. So um, there's, there's this saying that goes, you don't really understand something unless you can explain it to your grandmother. Mm. <laughs> You get it? I tried to teach her email once. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. So the Bible says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 13, verse 15, to sanctify yourselves, sorry, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man, mm -hmm. not everyone except Satanists or everyone yeah. except the person that doesn't agree with you, to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. Now the word fear there, actually synonyms of it is with reverence. How can you give an answer if you don't have one? Yeah. How can you explain something that you don't understand? So something to keep in mind. It's important and comforting to know that we aren't alone in this and we shouldn't be totally dependent on our knowledge anyway. The Holy Spirit is with us and wants to help us. God promises that he will tell us what to say when we need to say it. The second thing is uh, people have a knack of making things more complicated than they really are. Have you experienced that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when money's involved. Yeah, yeah, you won't understand it. Just pay me and I'll do it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So, and throughout history, the history of Christianity, there have been so many falsehoods and abuses done in the name of the Bible, in the name of Christianity. And even today, the Christian lifestyle is deemed impossible in this day and age. And how could you? Like, you're so dated mm -hmm. in all of these things. But um, get this, that was actually the view in biblical times as well. Yeah. And when you really look at it, Christianity is, is pretty simple. I just find this interesting that God himself 
speaks in the Bible and he lets us know what he's expecting from us as Christians. And it's in Micah chapter six. And I encourage all of you to actually read that whole chapter because, um, well, Micah chapter six, verse eight is the verse that I'm referencing. But before that, God actually gives these examples of what people are coming to him and saying, should I do this? Should I do that? And there are all these crazy extreme things. And after verse um, eight, he actually goes on to explain what's to come for those people who have been deceitful about his words. Mm. But Micah chapter six, verse eight says, he hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Mm. Man, that's so complicated. Mm. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about that? Sounds Three good. steps. And, and it's just repeated and enlarged throughout the entire Bible, maybe said in different ways, but at the core, it's saying the same thing. It's an interesting verse that I think of that goes along with that in a somewhat indirect way. I think it's Amos 3.3. 3. Mm -hmm. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Yeah. You know, so if you're going to walk with God, it'll be on the same page. Yeah. So. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. Mm -hmm. That's not just saying OMG or whatever that's saying. I'm a Christian and look at all the things that you do that aren't Christian like yeah. it's making God look bad well thank you guys for playing this little game for um, using the props mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, we hope you learned something today if you did please like and share this video all over the interwebs and we just thank you so much for your love and support and we encourage you to gain your own personal understanding of the Bible so that you will be able to accurately and confidently share the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.